Welcome to Culturing Microbes. This is the Yeast Lab. The first step is to make sure that you scrub up. So wash your hands really well. You want to make sure that you don't get any contamination from your hands into your workspace. You should work to be as sterile as possible, so wear a mask and your safety glasses. The first step is to pour your agar petri plates. All right, so the first thing you want to make sure that you do is clean your workspace. So make sure you've wiped everything down with cleaner. Make sure you're wearing your mask, right? Make sure you've got safety glasses on your face. Um, regular glasses are fine or lab provided safety glasses. Once you're sure that your hands and your lab space are clean, you wanna gather your materials and get ready. You'll need your yeast lab kit. You'll need your balance. You'll need your Sharpie. You'll need hot hands of some kind, pot holders, whatever. A towel would even work if you're very careful your notebook, okay, you wanna put on your safety glasses. You should also wear a mask, to make sure that you don't accidentally spit into your sterile environment. And you want some sort of heat proof and microwave safe container. Okay, so ideally it would be something with a pour spout, like um, if you have like a glass or plastic measuring cup with a pour spout that's microwave safe, um, here's like a smaller version of that, but really anything that's heat proof and microwave safe will work. So you could use a mug, Right, make sure it's a microwave safe mug. You could use a mason jar. Right, you could use a Pyrex uh, Tupperware. You could even use just a regular bowl, right? Just something that's gonna be able to hold a small volume and be put into the microwave safely. Okay, so what you're gonna do is first make sure that you weigh out the right amount of potato dextrose. All right, you got your clean hands, make sure they're very clean. You'll find your potato dextrose. All right, turn on your balance. If you put the weigh on there to start with, it should automatically zero, okay? And then you can use your little scoop or just very carefully tap out the right amount. This is based on the calculation in your notebook. So double check your calculation in your flowchart for the amount to weigh out. reseal this. There's enough extra probably to retry this if needed. Um, so just in case, reseal and pop it back into your kit. You're going to find your heat proof vessel. You're going to pour the potato dextrose agar in there. Okay. You're then going to use your tube here, your uh, 50 mil tube, to measure out 20 milliliters of water. So find that 20 mil line, fill it with tap water up to that 20 mil line. You're going to add that into your potato dextrose agar. Try to make sure it's pretty precisely 20 milliliters to make sure you get the ratio right here. Okay. Add that in. You're gonna grab one of your wooden stir sticks. You're gonna mix this up. And then you're gonna microwave. Make sure that you are wearing your safety glasses for this. Okay. Set the, bring the wooden stir stick with you and you'll need your hot hands, okay? So you're gonna bring these to your microwave. All right, now using your hot hands, you're gonna put your uh, potato dextrose agar and water into the microwave in the heat proof container. You're going to set it for um, 30 seconds at half power. Okay, close her on up and start. Okay. Once it's done, you're going to use your hot hands to pull it out, your wooden stir stick to stir, and see if it's all the way dissolved. All right. So with your hot hands, bring it over. All right. Make sure your safety glasses are on. Take your wooden stir stick and carefully stir. Okay. Mine looks like it's not quite all the way dissolved yet, so I'm going to put it back in for another 30 seconds on half power, and then again use my hot hands to pull it out and stir again. And you want to make sure you keep an eye on the microwave so that the solution doesn't boil over. All right, so you bring it back, stir it. Okay, it looks nice and dissolved now. All right, and we are ready to move on. So you're going to grab your Petri plates next. Okay. should have two Petri plates. Okay. You're gonna label them on the bottom. So these Petri plates have two parts. You wanna keep them closed as much as possible. So if they came open in the bag, close them right away and do not touch the inside, okay? So the bottom is this part, the like smaller circle, this part that goes over, that's the lid. So flip it upside down so you're writing on the bottom. You're gonna write nice and small around the edge. You're gonna put your initials, the date, period, and what's going to go in here, which is going to be yeast. Okay, you're then going to draw a line right down the middle that we're going to use later. Okay. 
You're gonna do the same thing for the other plate. Again, make sure it stays closed as much as possible. Make sure you're wearing your mask so you don't accidentally spit in it. Make sure your hands are very clean. Now, you're gonna stack these up and you're gonna pour your agar. You may find that you still need your hot hands, right? So be careful, check that it's not too hot. If you need to lift it with your hot hands, that's fine. Okay. You're gonna crack open the bottom one, barely open, keep it closed as much as possible. You're gonna pour in just enough agar to cover the bottom of the plate. If it doesn't quite cover, you can close it and swirl a little bit to get it to cover the last little bit, okay? Then you're gonna open the top one. Again, don't open it too much. Keep it closed as much as possible. Pour in again, you wanna make sure you cover the bottom. If you have a little extra, go back and kind of top them up. You want them to be about halfway full. If you have a lot extra, that's fine. You can let it re-solidify in here and then like scrape it into the trash. Okay, now you're gonna set these aside and let them solidify while you prepare your yeast. While you leave your plates to cool, you wanna go ahead and prep the yeast. So you're gonna take another 15 mil tube, you're gonna label it, initial state period, and what it is, this is gonna be your yeast solution. And you gotta feed the yeast to get them growing. We're gonna feed them with sugar, so we're gonna start by making a sugar water solution. So you will probably have a little packet of sugar, like a restaurant packet. I just have this baggie. You'll want your yeast, you'll want some warm tap water, and then a weigh boat and your pallets, okay? The amount should be in your notebook, make sure you're following along in your pre-lab. We'll start by weighing out the sugar. Make sure you zero the balance with the weigh boat on it. Try to be as precise as you can. If you get a little over, just throw a little bit out. Once you get to the right amount, you're gonna put it into the tube. Try not to spill. And then you can reuse this weigh boat in just a moment. But I'll move it to the side while you fill up to the 10 mil line with the warm water. And it can just be tap water, that's fine. You want to make sure you don't go over 10 mils, so go slowly. Perfect. All right, you're going to put the cap on, you're going to mix. Make sure it's securely on there until all of the sugar dissolves. All right, now you're going to add the yeast. So again, make sure the balance is at zero. You're going to weigh out the right amount of yeast. close as you can get and you're going to add that also into your tube. Go ahead and secure it cap, cap firmly to start. Turn off your weigh boat or your balance, make sure you clean it if needed. You want to invert this to mix the yeast in. And then you're going to let it sit and start to grow and divide. I would place it upright and leave the cap a little bit loose so it can vent. It's gonna create carbon dioxide gas. So leave the cap just a little bit loose, upright somewhere, leave these two things to sit and you can clean up everything else. All right, so once your plates have cooled, you wanna go ahead and make sure your hands are clean again, so wash them real well. Put on your mask and safety glasses to make sure you're creating a very sterile environment. We're gonna add some of the yeast to your positive side of your Petri plates. So you wanna go ahead and screw on the cap tightly and invert the tube a couple of times to mix it all up. Okay. Open it back up. I would keep the cap on a little bit for now while we get everything ready. All right, so the Petri plates, you got your solid layer of agar now at the bottom. There's some condensation on the top, don't worry about that. All right, and you've got your plus side where you're gonna put the yeast and your minus side that's your control, so no yeast, okay? You want to make sure these plates stay closed as much as possible, okay? Anytime they're open, you risk contaminating. You especially want to be careful not to touch the inside of the plates. So I've seen students before like lift the lid off with their thumb touching the inside of the lid. That's bad, right? You want to make sure they stay as sterile as possible. Okay, so you're going to need a clean wooden stir stick and a clean transfer pipette. You're just going to put one drop 
onto each plate on the plus side. And again, keep things closed as much as possible. Don't like touch the end of this or anything like that. Okay. So let's start here. So you're gonna find the plus side, which is here. And you're gonna put one drop on there. Okay, and then I would maybe, let's see. Let's put this back in here so it doesn't touch the, the counter or anything. You're gonna take your wooden stir stick and you're gonna very carefully open this up, cover, hold this cover over it so it doesn't get anything falling from above. And you're gonna use the wooden stir stick to gently, gently spread the liquid across the surface of the plus side only. Don't touch the minus side. And you wanna be very gentle. Like imagine you're like icing a cake. You don't wanna dig in. You don't wanna disrupt the agar at all. You're just sliding it across the surface on the plus side. All right, then you're gonna cover it up. All right, don't set this down. Now we're gonna move on to the other one. All right, again, you're gonna add one drop to the plus side. Make sure you double check which one's which. Using the same wooden stir stick, you're gonna again gently spread like you're icing a cake. Spread that across the plus side of the plate. You wanna try and avoid lifting any agar up like I just did, so be as gentle as you can be. All right, these are now gonna sit someplace that's warm but not hot so you don't want them cold but you also don't want to put them like in a window where they might get direct sun or like on a heater so just probably somewhere in your kitchen is fine you're going to set these aside overnight everything else at this point can be thrown away so your wooden stir stick your pipette and your tube can just get thrown away and then you're going to wait until tomorrow to check your plates Every day you should take a, take a look at your plates and try and photograph them. As soon as you see clear growth like this, you're done. Okay? And then you can go ahead and clean up. If you don't see growth by day three, I would go ahead and clean up anyways. You don't wanna risk growing something gross. So once you see growth on your plates, what you really wanna do is you wanna make sure you sterilize them just in case there's some other growth aside from the yeast that's on here. All right, so 10% bleach is a little less dangerous than undiluted bleach, but it still can uh, mess up your clothes and hurt your eyes. Um, so you still wanna be careful. You're gonna open up your plates one at a time, and you're just gonna cover the surface with bleach. So pour enough to cover. You don't wanna overflow it, so be careful. But just enough to cover the surface. Great, and then close it back up. Same for the next one, cover the surface and close it back up. You wanna let these sit for at least 15 minutes, but more like an hour is better. And then um, they should be pretty sterilized. So even if there was something weird growing, it's all fine now. Um, and you can go ahead and just sort of drain them in the sink and throw them in the trash. I would still wash your hands after doing this just to be safe.